They might have been able to draw for army, but they still got three special characters. One got artwork, one got a model, and one got neither. Let's start with the one that got artwork first. Satan the Black, Commander of the Tower of Tsar. Even among the runs and cruelty of the Chaos Dwarfs, Satan stands out as one whose deeds are exceptionally brutal. He serves the sorcerer lord Gorf the Cruel, and is said when his master presides the sacrifices to Hashut, all they hear is the grossing laughter of Satan. When flesh slaves are needed, Satan gladly goes out to collect them, taking great pleasure in crushing orcs and goblins that dare stand in his way. His reputation has reached the point that the goblin tribes have capitulated and provided the slaves he wants, rather than face the cruel punishments he would inflict on them if they didn't. Satan was 172 points, and could be your general if you wanted. Stat line wise, movement 3, run skill 8, best skill 6, strength 4, toughness 5, runes 4, initiative 6, attacks 3, lead of 10. Equipment wise, he came with heavy armour and a warhammer base, and was allowed up to 4 magic items. He could also ride a Lamazoo or Great Taurus if you wanted. As for special rules, due to his cruelty, he had the hatred special rule against all enemies he fights. And that's it. Yeah, Satan was a good Chaos Dwarf Lord choice, as he had one more magic item than usual, and hatred, which is always handy to have, so yeah. Now, next up we have the one that got no model art, and it's kind of fitting it with being the Hobgoblin Lord, Gorda's Backstabber. The renown of Hobgoblin Chieftains tends to fade quickly than most other races. This is usually due to a dagger in the back, poison, or a nasty accident in quotation marks. Gorda's, however, is an exception, is he has outlived every other chieftain due to his naturally distrustful disposition and lashings of cunning in letting him survive. Granted, he has had some close calls and his body is covered in scars, but for now, his luck continues to hold. Gordas was 93 points and movement 4, weapon skill 6, best skill 6, strength 4, toughness 4, ruins 3, initiative 5, attacks 4, leadership 8. He came with light armour, shield and axe base and allowed to take 3 magic items. Matt Wise could ride a giant rule for 4 points. Now, special rolls wise, due to how lucky and sneaky he is, whenever you take a fatal strike, you roll a dice, and on a 4 plus, he survives a 1 wound. Yeah, kind of handy. This does mean, like Zatan, Gordon's is just a nice upgrade to the basic Hobgoblin characters, and a decent option to take if you just wanted a Hobgoblin character, really. Still, on to the one who got the model Astrogoth, High Priest of Hashut is the oldest living Chaos Dwarf. When he was at the height of his powers, he was the most potent Chaos Dwarf sorcerer who had ever lived. Still, the petrification furts even affect him, but he was not going to let that stop him. He constructed a powerful magical device, allowing him to control his petrified limbs still and continue his work. This, alongside the many other war machines he has created, has earned him the reputation of the master of the Chaos Dwarf's twisted dark science. Astrogoth was 358 points and movement 6, weapon skill 6, best skill 3, strength 5, toughness 5, ruins 4, initiative 5, attacks 3, leadership 10, and he could be the general of your army. Equipment wise, he just came with his mechanical body, which gave him a 3 plus armor save and allowed 4 magic items. He is also a level 4 wizard still and uses the Chaos Dwarf magic law. Now, his mechanical body had two special rules attached to it. The first one being, while he does have a movement of 6, he still only marches and charges 6, it can't go any faster than that. Still, it does mean he doesn't get the minus 1 penalty for pursuing or fleeing like other Chaos Dwarfs. In combat, it also grants him the Death Blow ability. If he attacks the same target with all three of his attacks, and they all hit, his arm goes into overdrive, and he can immediately strike the target again with three more attacks. Yeah, Astrogoth was a good source for alternative, as a 3 plus armor save without it interfering with magic is decent, and that overdrive ability in combat with a good magic weapon? Ooh, yeah, that could be potent. But that is it for the Chaos Dwarfs, and also kind of where they stopped. Sure, they got some Revening Horde rules in 6th edition when it launched, but after that, until Forge Royal got their hands on them, they got no further development bar occasionally showing up with like the Hell Cannon and the Warriors of Chaos. 
Which is a shame, as they're an interesting alternative with their green skin slaves fighting alongside the dwarf warriors and war machines. Though, speaking of the green skins, it is time. The second Ed Orc Codex is next up, and then the Orcs and Goblins of 4th Edition following them. The Green Tide is here, and it's time to WAR!